Well, hi there. You know stuff about plants. You know that they need water and light. It's also likely that you know that they need carbon dioxide, CO2. You probably know that they produce oxygen. And you probably know that they make their own food. Well, that food is a carbohydrate, CH2O. You can link that carbohydrate monomer together to form various different carbohydrates, like glucose, which is six of those linked together, C6H12O6. But what they make is some sort of a molecule with a multiple of one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. The combination of all of these things that you know is this. Water, H2O, plus sunlight, plus carbon dioxide, CO2, make oxygen, O2, and sugar, CH2O. This process is called photosynthesis. And I want to go into a bit more detail on where this happens. In plants, photosynthesis occurs in an organelle called a chloroplast. So all of this is going on in the chloroplast. I'm going to keep this simple so you can understand the big picture. You can hang more detail on this foundation in the future, but there are two primary reactions that occur in the chloroplast. The first is the light reaction, and the other is sometimes referred to as the dark reaction. Now, I don't love this name because it kind of conveys something about the dark reaction that isn't true. If you had to guess one thing that is required for the light reaction, what would it be? Light? You'd be correct. I'm even going to add light right here to our diagram. I make it look like a wave because light travels in waves. The light reaction shockingly requires light. And knowing that the light reaction requires light, what might you assume is required by the dark reaction? Darkness? And that makes perfect sense. It just doesn't happen to be the case. It is true that the dark reaction does not require light, but it also doesn't require darkness. It happens with or without light. It is light independent. So I very much prefer the name light independent reaction. Another name that you're likely to see is the Calvin cycle. So dark reaction, light independent reaction, and Calvin cycle are all names that you might see for the second reaction. So what we know so far is that light goes into the light reaction, and there is also a light independent reaction. And in the end, sugar, CH2O, comes out. So sugar comes out of the light independent reaction in the end. Now, let's go back to the light reaction for a moment. Water, H2O, goes into the light reaction. Now, all that is used from water is the hydrogen. We use the energy from light to break apart the water molecule. We tear off the hydrogens, and guess what we do with the oxygen? We throw that garbage away. Oxygen is most stable when there are two of them, so we let two of them bind together to form one O2, and we throw that garbage away. And it is garbage for plants. Plants do use O2 to perform cellular respiration. But since they use sugar to build themselves as well as for energy, they release a lot more O2 than they use. The truth is that when photosynthetic organisms first started releasing O2 into the atmosphere, it was a toxic gas for many of the organisms that existed at the time. Oxygen released into the atmosphere by photosynthetic organisms caused one of the great mass extinctions in the history of the world. But those organisms that survived do pretty well in an oxygen-rich atmosphere. So today, it seems pretty nice that plants release oxygen. OK, so water comes into the light reaction, and the energy from light is used to remove the hydrogens, and the oxygen is thrown away. It's cool that we have hydrogen, because the molecule that we're trying to build, CH2O, has hydrogen in it. The problem is that my hydrogens are in the light reaction, and I need to get them over to the light independent reaction so I can use them to build my sugar. For this, I'm going to need a truck, and that truck is called NADP+. So NADP+, comes to the light reaction where it is loaded up with hydrogen to form NADPH. Guess what the H in NADPH stands for? Hydrogen! So NADPH goes over to the light independent reaction and drops off the hydrogen. My unloaded truck now becomes NADP plus and heads back over to the light reaction to do it all again. And now I have the hydrogen that I need to build, CH2O. All that I need now is some C and some O. If only there was a molecule floating around everywhere that had both of these. 
Ah, CO2, hooray! So CO2 comes into the light independent reaction. And now we have all of the ingredients that I need to make sugar, C, H2O. The problem is that it takes energy to break apart the CO2 molecule and form the CH2O molecule. And this reaction doesn't use the sun for power. So where does it get the energy to do this? From the same source that cells usually use for energy, ATP. So the energy from ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is used by breaking off one of the phosphates and forming adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and a phosphate by itself, inorganic phosphate. This works by breaking a high energy bond and forming lower energy bonds, resulting in a net release of energy. And this energy is used to break apart the CO2 and form CH2O. Now, if only we had a source of energy that we could use to reassemble the ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. All right, the sun. So ADP and inorganic phosphate head over to the light reaction where they are reassembled into ATP to power the light independent reaction in the future. And if you look for a simplified diagram of photosynthesis, this is generally what you'll see. But the first time I had to teach this concept, I realized something terrible. If you look at the light independent reaction, CO2 comes in. This is one carbon and two oxygens. And CH2O comes out. This is one carbon and one oxygen. So two oxygens come in for every carbon, but only one goes out. What the heck happens to that other oxygen? So I started asking graduate students that study plant physiology and a professor of plant physiology, and nobody can tell me what happens to the other oxygen. Until finally, I asked the right person, who didn't know either, but she knew where to look. And this is what happens. Sometimes, when water gets its hydrogens ripped off and sent over to the light-independent reaction, the light-independent reaction looks at them and says, ah, I know you're here to become sugar, but we have a problem. You see, two oxygens are coming in for every carbon in CO2, but only one is going out as sugar. And the oxygen only comes out of the light reaction. So what I need for you to do is to grab another one of your hydrogen buddies and grab one of the oxygens and make water, which I know is where you just were, and head back over to the light reaction. Then you can get ripped back off of that water and sent back over here, and then maybe it will be time for you to become sugar. Or maybe we'll send you around for another lap. And that's what happens to the extra oxygen. And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.